It's 4 p.m. in Butler, Pennsylvania. It's 1 p.m. in Chula Vista, California. Today marks the beginning of our series, The End Times. It is beyond dispute that under left-wing rule, things aren't right in America and around the globe. But does it go beyond political upheaval, beyond evil being on the march? Some believe we are witnessing the beginning of the end of days. Are we seeing the signs out there? And where are our alleged leaders in the eternal battle between good and evil? We explore it all without fear or favor. The Chris Alcedo Show starts right now. And afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Chris Alcedo Show here on Newsmax. In moments, we will begin our examination of the end times. But I want to start with the never-ending battle that I believe we're in, the battle between good and evil. It is my considered belief that we are called upon and joined by Christ Jesus and God Almighty to fight evil wherever it exists. Some are better at it than others. Some stars are rising in the 2022 election cycle. These folks are burning far brighter than any Democrat and also performing head and shoulders above those who surrender to evil inside the leadership of the GOP. The folks I speak of are conservatives, opposing evil the right way and the wrong way. That's our focus in today's preamble. Now, I could give you my sense of what evil is, but let me let a former Democrat describe it for me because I think she did a thorough and accurate job. I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party that's under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers who are driven by cowardly wokeness, who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms that are enshrined in our Constitution, who are hostile to people of faith and spirituality, who demonize the police but protect criminals at the expense of law-abiding Americans. As stated, I believe people of faith should oppose all of that evil. It doesn't get any more sick, twisted, and sadistic than the unrestrained slaughter of children in the womb. In the current Senate race in Ohio, we see Trump-endorsed conservative J.D. Vance up against a man who supports left-wing extremism with 100% of his votes, Tim Ryan. Mr. Ryan is a guy who supports no restrictions on abortion. Then Ryan tries to lie about J.D. Vance's position on abortion. Mr. Vance is opposed to abortion on demand, but supports exceptions for the life of the mother and criminal activity. In Monday's debate, with the help of left-wing biased moderators, Tim Ryan tried to say that J.D. Vance would have forced a 10-year-old girl to have a child that resulted from a rape. The accusation was 100% false. But that's when Vance flipped the script on the unfair moderators and the left-wing extremists known as Tim Ryan. Watch. But let's talk about that case. Because why was a 10-year-old girl raped in our community, raped in our state in the first place? The thing the media and Congress and Ryan, they talk about this all the time, the thing they never mentioned is that poor girl was raped by an illegal alien, somebody that should have never been in this state in the first place. You voted so many times against border wall funding, so many times for amnesty, Tim. If you had done your job, she would have never been raped in the first place. Do your job on border security. Don't lecture me about opinions I don't actually have. Mm -hmm. That is how you talk to morally bankrupt members of the press. That's how you talk to degenerate Democrats. That's how you stand up to pure evil. But this is how you surrender to pure evil. I thought it was a mistake to, you know, basically, I think, do publicity stunts of busing people out of, uh, from the border up to other states. And I know, uh, you know, I said, uh, you know, they, were, they, they put thousands of them in Washington, D.C., which is right next to my state. And I reminded my colleagues that we didn't have Border Patrol at the Maryland, D.C. line and that they were dropping these thousands of folks in buses. They were crossing into my state and it was now a problem I had to deal with rather than them. Uh, let's just, you know, try to address the issue seriously and fix the problem rather than trying to get on TV. <laughs> OK, who's the we that outgoing governor and alleged Republican Larry Hogan is talking about? Does he have a mouse in his pocket? Unless Hogan was suggesting that he and his Surrender Caucus Republicans are colluding with Joe Biden to open up our borders. Governor Hogan couldn't care less about all the crime, rape, death, drugs, destruction, as long as it, he doesn't have to deal with it. 
We don't have a border patrol in Maryland. Well, guess what, Governor? Neither does Texas. Our border patrol has been ordered to stand down by Joe Biden and the Democrats, who are letting in more criminals, more rapists, more violent thugs, along with millions of illegal aliens who don't qualify for asylum. Instead of standing up to that evil, Mr. Hogan is perfectly comfortable surrendering to it, so long as he doesn't have to deal with it. That's the wrong way to oppose lawlessness and evil. Now, here's another good way to oppose evil, the evil of Democrat racism. Here's conservative gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake reminding everybody that her racist Democrat opponent refuses to show up and debate her. She has terrible ideas, right. and she's trying to say it's because I'm a conspiracy theorist? Then show up on, on the debate stage and call me out, for goodness sakes. We need strength, and it's, it's unbelievable that she won't stand up and debate. And this is happening all over the country. They have terrible ideas, they know the people aren't with them, and they're afraid, and they're cowards. And she knows she's going to get called out for being a twice-convicted racist, which the media, the mainstream leftist media, won't cover. For your information, NBC, Katie Hobbs was twice convicted of being a racist. Mm -hmm. You see, that's a clinic. That's the right way to oppose evil in our time. Here's the wrong way. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that Carrie Lake is not elected. So, does that include campaigning for Democrats if that's what it takes? Yes. It does. Okay, very well. All right, establishment Republican Liz Cheney is so committed to stopping conservatives. She's so committed to making sure America First principles are never enacted. Liz Cheney is so dedicated to lashing out at the voters who rejected her that she is actually willing to campaign for a known racist to meet her venomous political objectives. If Christ Jesus is the Prince of Peace, then Satan is truly the Prince of Lies. He is the originator, my friends, of fake news. People of conviction refuse to traffic in lies. A Republican candidate for the Virginia State Senate, Tina Ramirez, tweeted that she refused to surrender to the left's narrative over facts by tweeting, I teach my daughter real American history. I refuse to join the radical left's campaign to erase history. That led to a rebuke from a left-wing purveyor of lies, a fake journalist by the name of David Levitt. He responded by saying, quote, Are you celebrating torture, rape, murder, and enslavement? And that led to one of the most complete takedowns of the lunatic left's narrative over news that I've seen in quite a while. Ramirez responded by tweeting, Mighty bold and liberal of you to lecture a Hispanic mother with a black daughter on racism. What's next? Are you going to lecture me on women's rights? <laughs> See, that's how it's done, my friends. That's how you stand for facts instead of caving to leftist lies. And here's how you surrender to leftist lies. One of Mitch's boys, the failed presidential candidate Mitt Romney, is remaining neutral in the Senate race in Utah. The contest is between Senator Mike Lee and left-wing-backed Evan McMullen. This is all part of McConnell's efforts to make sure the Democrats can continue their market destruction of the West and the United States, vaulting communist China to the top by making sure the forecast red wave doesn't result in the Senate flipping to the GOP. According to Molly Hemingway of The Federalist, some members of the GOP who foolishly thought the GOP leadership was working toward defeating Democrats are openly expressing their disdain for Romney's disgraceful display of his self-professed severe conservatism. Let me assure you, it is in no way conservative to withhold support for those in opposition to a party and ideology that are destroying so many lives, including the lives of your constituents, Mitt Romney. I've mentioned on my radio show and on the Salcedo Storm podcast recently that I, I can't get the image of a chessboard out of my head. I can see the great forces of the world marshalling. I can see clearly those who serve the light and those who do not. I know many of you can see this too. Now is the time to act on that knowledge. Make sure you are doing all you can to fight evil in our time and make sure you leave enablers of evil behind. Now, let's get to our first guests.